Hello, everyone. Welcome to our talk. I'm Shaozi Hong. I'm a graduate student at National Yangming Zhao Chong University, and my major is computer science. In this talk, I will focus on RCU, which is a well-known lock-free synchronization mechanism. I will introduce what it is, when to use it and the comparison with other mechanisms. In addition, this talk also covers the current status and cases of RCU in the Linux kernel or user space. This is today's online. I will first give a brief introduction to RCU. Then I will talk about RCU's current state and torture test in the Linux kernel. Finally, we will take a look at the user space RCU. First of all, let's take a look at RCU. I'm going to explain it in a quick and simple way. Read, copy, update is a lock-free synchronization mechanism. Its basic idea is splitting update procedures into two different phases, removal and reclamation. To couple with this design, RCU has to maintain multiple versions for recycle coherence. These are three important concepts in RCU, removal, grace period, and reclamation. In the removal phase, when an updater wants to remove data items, it removes old references to data items within a data structure, so that subsequent readers cannot gain an old reference to it. In addition, if an updater wants to revise data items, it removes old references to data items and replaces them with new data items. In this phase, the updater, uh, the updater can run concurrently with readers. Second, in the grace, uh, in the grace period, the time interval between a removal and a reclamation phase. It represents that some readers are still accessing old references to data items. So, updaters cannot reclaim memory in this phase. Last, in the reclamation phase, a grace period has elapsed. It guarantees that readers no longer have access to old references during this phase, so the updater can reclaim the removed memory during the above removal phase. So, mm. Why don't we just use mutex or other locking mechanisms? But instead, use RCU. Besides deadlock in over avoidance, we can also get good scalability. Using RCU can bring some benefits to performance and scalability. This is a simple benchmark using user space RCU. The, uh, the, the, the x-axis is the number of the processes, and the y-axis is the completion time. We can compare completion time in mutex and several RCU flavors. It is easy to see the, the advantage of RCU on scalability. The, uh, the, uh, the, the origin line is the uh, mutex 
luck. It's always important to use the right tool for the job, even RCU. RCU works best on read mostly workloads, where stale and inconsistent data is not a problem. In contrast, RCU is not suitable for update mostly workloads, but using RCU can still provide web-free reside primitives for real-time usage. Using RZU correctly, we can get some benefits like excellent performance and scalability for readers, and reside immunity to lock bags, deadlocks, etc. This is a table that compares RCU with other common mechanisms. Both RCU and header point have low overheads for reading and traversal. RCU can support wet free read operations, but reclamation of unbounded objects can be delayed for as long as a single thread is delayed. So roughly, RCU is simpler to use than hazard pointers because it protects all protectable objects. I will now introduce some case studies about RCU. First of all, let's take a look at RCU's current set in the Linux kernel. RCU was added to the Linux kernel in 2002, and its implementation was rewritten and redesigned many times. There are also several RCU flavors in the kernel. I will introduce these implementations and flavors in the following slides. There are three different RCU implementations. Classic RCU, Tree RCU, and Tiny RCU. Classic RCU uses a global CPU mask to record the status of all CPUs. A big set represents that the CPU is in a grace period, and a bit clear represents that the CPU is in a quiescent state. Since CPU mask is a global variable that is accessed by all the CPUs, we need a lock to protect the CPU mask. However, it suffers from poor scalability because all the CPUs have to acquire the lock before changing their own status. Classic RCU was already replaced by Tree RCU in version 2.6. Tree RCU is one of the current RCU implementations in the Linux kernel. It changes the original architecture to a hierarchical tree structure, which can bring some benefits. The most significant improvement is reducing lock contention since it separated CPUs into a two-level tree structure, and it can accommodate 1,024 CPUs. If there are more than 1,024 CPUs, it will become a three-level tree automatically.
Tiny RCU is also one of the current RCU implementations in the Linux kernel. To specify to use Tiny RCU, you can simply set the config SMP to N and rebuild it. This implementation has some features. First, when a CPU passes through a quiescent state, it means a grace period has elapsed. Second, it also provides a quite small implementation in the Linux kernel. Earlier, I introduced RCU's implementation. Next, I will introduce more RCU flavors in the Linux kernel. What is RCU flavors? A flavor is a type of RCU used in a specific situation. RCU in the Linux kernel has many flavors. There are non preemptable and preemptable RCU, and there are also four other flavors. They are button half flavor, schedule flavor, sleepable, and tasks. RCU. Both button half flavor and scheduled flavor disable something. The difference between them is that one disables soft IRQ and the other disables preemption. Button half flavor RCU which calls local BH disable function in recite critical sessions was, de was developed to withstand the network based denial of service attacks. So, it guarantees that RCU can complete grace period under indefinite soft IRQ. Schedule flavor disables preemption under a non preemptible config. It has the same implementation as RCU. It is noteworthy that calling RCU read unlock scheduled may enter the scheduler. It will have some overhead at low pri priority tasks. Sleepable RCU allows blocking and sleeping in the reside critical session. So, if you want to block or sleep in a reside critical session, you should use it. However, why is sleeping prohibited with, within classic RCU reside critical sessions? Because Seeds, uh, because sleeping implies there's a context switch, which is a quiescent state, and RCU requires that quiescent states never appear in recite critical sessions. Finally, tasks RCU is a task based RCU rather than CPU based. In the normal RCU case, only one process can hold a protected reference on any given CPU. However, the trampolines used for tracing may use an old version references, a reference, and it is not possible to mark a reside critical session. So, tasks RCU is designed to figure out when no process or a task can hold such a reference. Here is a brief introduction for some commonly used RCU APIs. Since 2019, RCU button have RCU scheduled and RCU preempt are consolidated. 
before consolidation. These flavors are too confusing to avoid bugs. So developers wanted to find a long-term solution. Thus, all of these flavors use the same synchronized RCU and co-RCU functions. But it kept the original Relock APIs because it is beneficial for finer grant checking provided like Lockdown. Lastly, a last, as I mentioned before, APIs of RCU tasks are quite compact. It doesn't have relock APIs. Now, let's take a look at the RCU torture. RCU torture is a kernel module, which was designed to make sure that Linux kernel RCU actually works. A thorough torture test is helpful for us to build a robust program. If the test failed, we can find where it has bugs. But even if the test passed, it doesn't mean RCU is perfect. Perhaps that test is not comprehensive enough to find all the bugs. We can use quite a simple command to run the RCU torture test. The execution time depends on the CPU and different arguments. After the execution, we will get a report under the REST directory. This image is a summary of my test. We can customize our own test by adjusting arguments. For example, the first line specifies the tests you want to execute. The second line specifies the duration of each test. The 720 means 720 minutes. And the last line turns on the kernel address sanitizer during test ex execution. If you want to know more configurations about RCU torture, you can check out the link in the bottom right corner. We can find all configs under the RCU torture slash configs slash RCU directory. Now I will analyze some test cases. Tree two, uh, tree zero two is a case designed for testing tree RCU. The config RCU fan out and config RCU fan out list specify the fan out of non leaf nodes and leaf nodes of the tree respectively. Lower fan out values can reduce lock contention, but also increase the memory overhead. So the fan out is uh, this in this picture. This is uh, leaf node and out, and uh, this is non leaf and out. Tree okay. ten is a case designed for testing tree RCU in a large system, which specifies 
56 CPUs. The non preemptible three best RCU implementation is appropriate for server class SMP build. Tiny level 1 class disables SMP support, so it tests the tiny RCU implementation on the uni processor. The rest of the cases will not be covered in this presentation. If you are interested, you can check out the link in the bottom right. Next, let's move on to user space RCU. User Space RCU is an RCU library in user space. It provides not only URCU APIs, but also some APIs about concurrent data structures and atomic operations. There are also several flavors of user space RCU, and each flavor map to one linking argument. Also, these are linking arguments. First of all, linking the, uh, linking the application with liburcu lib is the most preferred way to use this library. It has good performance and grace period detection on resize and uh, it has good performance on grace period detection and resize speed. And it dynamically detects kernel support for this main barrier function. If it is unsupported. It falls back to liburcu MB and has lower resize speed. The URCU signal flavor is faster than the previous URCU memory barrier version, but it requires a signal for implementation, typically SIG user 1. And the QSBR flavor has the fattest resize speed due to zero resize overhead. However, it is more intrusive than other flavors since every reader has to call quiescent state Peri uh, periodically. The last flavor is bulletproof. It is designed to help a tracing library to hook on applications without modifying these applications. If you want to build a library function and have no control over thread creation, the bulletproof RCU is your only viable choice. All RCU initialization and thread registration functions become known operations here. Now, let's take a look at a simple book borrowing system with RCU. One version is implemented in the kernel space, and the other is implemented with pthread and urcu library in the, in the user space. The reader, ch the reader checks whether the book is in the borrowing system. Use a list for each entry rcu macro. 
both examples use a read lock and unlock to define the resign critical session and use a for each macro. Yeah, this macro to find the book. And this use a URC API for each to find the book. The updater can add books, can add books or modify the status. When it wants to modify the status, the status of one book, it will require a lock to prevent interference from other updaters. Then it can use a macro to replace the old node. It use an uh, it uses spin lock to prevent the interference and uh, you can use list as list replace as you to replace the old node in the data structure then the updater calls synchronize as you to detect the end of a grasp period so it can release the the unused memory you can uh, it calls synchronize as you here and uh, call K free here and in the user space it also call, calls a uh, synchronize as you here and uh, free the, the removed node here thanks for listening this is the end of my presentation any questions and here has some references. If you are interested, you can check out it.